Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your educator. I warmly welcome you all on our YouTube channel where we in today's video are going to move forward with yet another post-structuralist, a literary theorist, right? But before jumping directly onto that, I would give you a brief about what we have covered till now. So if you guys have or have not watched the previous videos, I'll just give you the chronology of what we have covered. We have tried to cover post-structuralism. Uh, I have tried to provide you with a very brief conceptualized introduction to post-structuralism. How is it different as a school from structuralism? Because structuralists are saying that there is only one single truth that you need to maintain the objectivity about and to reach. On the other hand, the post-structuralists are the ones who are going to challenge the notions of this one single truth. They are going to say that we have multiple interpretations of the same thing, same phenomena. We have multiple, um, you know, meanings. We can have multiple meanings of different, different things, so to say. So, there I have tried to give you a much and more introduction about post-structuralism. We have also tried to talk about major theorists in another video. And in that particular video, I have given you a chronological sequence of the books that the theorists have, uh, you know, penned down and all. And then... We have covered the theorists such as Foucault, Michel Foucault, who is basically and much more related with the terms such as esteem, power, knowledge, discourse. On the other hand, we have also covered in the last video, we have covered Jacques Derrida, who is associated majorly with a sub-school of uh, post-structuralism, that is deconstruction, which is associated with what? Which is associated with the, you know, understanding the application of post-structuralist uh, viewpoints, point of views, etc. on any work, any literary work, correct? So, we have covered these many theorists, these many things uh, related to post-structuralism till now. In today's video, we are going to discuss Rolambas. Now, in the previous videos, I have given you the birthplaces of the literary theorists who were there. Rolambas was someone who was born in France. Again, he is, now one thing which is majorly important about Roland Barthes, let's just first of all show you the image of him, right? So, he is peeping through the screen to you all. He is associated majorly with, he was one such person, who was structuralist the pehle, who turned to post-structuralism, right? So, he was a structuralist. Later on, he became a post-structuralist in around 1960s when the movement was also, the school was also established. Correct? The major theorist Foucault, who is school ke associated with talking about post-structuralism, structuralists were of the point of view that only one single truth is there, there is hidden structure in each and everything. Everything is governed through structure, be it our daily life, etc. But post-structuralists are of the different point of view. They are going to challenge the notions which the structuralists have mentioned. They are saying no structures exist, right? But there are multiple things which happen simultaneously. The plurality is something which is yet to be celebrated. This is what they hold the view as. Hmm? So, if I give an example here, dog. Dog. Dog ka example do. Now, you guys will think of an animal with four legs, a tail, which keeps on wagging. A cute dog, right, would be a golden retriever. In someone's mind, aap mein se kisi ke mind mein golden retriever aayega. Kisi ke mind mein Pomeranian aayega, right? Kisi ke mind mein Labrador aayega, so on and so forth. I, I am not able to recall so many uh, breeds, so to say. Theek hai? So, every point of view is, uh, this, uh, you know, it's something which I cannot say ki wo galat hai. Every point of view is accepted. This is the plurality that the post-structuralists are saying. Wo baat jo thai, wo pehle structuralists thai, who used to believe in structure, structuralism, but nearly 1960s ke baad, he turned to a post-structuralist. And in the videos that I have covered him as a major theorist in post-structuralism, I have, mind you, note this information, I have covered the works which are majorly related to post-structuralism only. I have not covered the works which are related to structuralism. Correct? Now, moving forward with the terms, concepts, the aspect, the approach should be simple. Please bring your pen, paper, notebooks, etc. As I always say, bring them out. Start noting down the terms which are associated. Because here in post-structuralism, with parts, very less terms are important. But of course, they are important because the theorist is also someone who is interesting and important. 
Now, moving forward with the very important, the very first term that we have is acrivant, acrivane, right? It is used in the essay titled acrivanes et acrivans, right? Which means acrivans and acrivans. ठीक है दोनों के बारे में बात करी, which was published in the year 1960. And during 1960s only, I told you post-structuralism as a school was being established, correct? So in this year, this particular book was published. Two types of writers in writing he tries to talk about. यहाँ पे बात जो है, दो तरीके के writers in writing के बारे में बात करते हैं. What does he try to say? He says that there is one acrivant. Who's an acrivant? Acrivant is someone who's a transitive writer. ध्यान से, please note these things down. Acrivant is something, someone who's a transitive writer who makes the meaning beyond the writing itself. सिर्फ लिखना इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है लिखे में क्या मीनिंग्स एक्सेट्रा हैं दैट इज वन थिंग जो ट्रांसिटिव राइटर हुज नोन एज एक्रीवान वो बताते हैं करेक्ट देन वी हैव एक्रीवीन हुज एन इन ट्रांसिटिव राइटर ड्राइंग अटेंशन टू द एक्टिविटी ऑफ राइटिंग फॉर इट्स ओन सेक ओनली राइटिंग इज इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ राइटिंग इज डन यू आर यूजिंग अ पेन यू आर पेनिंग थिंग्स डाउन वॉट इज दट ऑफ राइटिंग इज वॉट एक्रीवेन विल सी याद कैसे कर सकते हैं एक इंटरेस्टिंग आप लोग को तरीका समझाती हूँ वी कैन इन ट्रांसिटिव राइटर है तो एंड का वर्ड इज इन एक्रीवेन इन ट्रांसिटिव तो द ऑपोजिट वन ऑफ कोर्स विल बी ट्रांसिटिव ओनली राइट इट हैज अ लास्ट वर्ड एज टी सो ट्रांसिटिव राइटर यू कैन मेमोराइज थिंग्स लाइक दीज ट्रिक्स करेक्ट इट इज क्लोजली लिंक्ड टू हिज आइडियाज ऑफ लीजिबल स्क्रिप्टेबल और रीजली राइटल We are going to discuss about readerly writerly. Writerly. First of all, let's just look at what is readerly writerly. Then again, we'll come to the transitive and intransitive writer again. Correct. So, readerly and writerly are the terms which are coined by Barthes as a post-structuralist. Right. He tries to distinguish between two fundamental types of texts which are there. Correct. He coins the terms readerly text. He coins the term writerly text. Now, in which work he coins them? Serzer, which was the one which was published in the year 1970. Barthes notes that whether a text is read as readerly or writerly depends on the reader's approach. Do I want to be a reader who text me actively participate kar raha hai? If I'm reading a novel, right? If I'm reading The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, and there comes a scene where the father is raping the young daughter. Right, the scene is described very much nicely, but and I get emotional. If I talk about Toba Tek Singh by Sadat Hasan Manto, उस story को if I am just reading it like that, reading it just as a chapter of my syllabus, I will not feel the passion, the pain that is hidden beneath the surface. But if I will actively participate there, that would lead to me getting emotional. I might even cry. It's a very beautiful short story written by Manto. So those two terms, how do I want to approach the text, is something which is important. If I want to approach the text in the readerly manner, what will I do? I will be the person who is going to passively respond. Whatever is written, I'm just going to read it for the sake of its own uh, purpose. That would be me being a in me being an intransitive writer. If I want to approach something as a writerly part, what will I do? Demands active engagement. Here I will actively engage. I might get so much overwhelmed. I might get emotional and all. Right? That is me participating actively. That is active is associated with a writerly text, and inactive passive response है तो वो हमारा readerly text बन जाए. Right? Just the way the writer intended it to be. Just पढ़ने के लिए लिखा था तो मैंने भी पढ़ने के लिए पढ़ा. That would be readerly. लेकिन writer ने लिखा था emotions evoke and those emotions have been evoked in me that's why the text becomes writer correct but that totally will depend upon the approach that the reader is choosing ki mujhe writer ke perspective se chalna hai or i have to develop my own perspective that would create certain sense of emotions could be cathartic to me correct as aristotle says in poetics then we move to another term that is pleasure and voice a yosa right It is employed in the book The Pleasure of the Text, 1973. May it got published. Let's just see. pleasure. 
the name itself is suggesting it is something which is pleasurable right more straight forward enjoyment derived from reading just a passive um, you know enjoyment oh my god i was reading uh, tony morrison's the bluest eye just for the sake of it that would be something that is a pleasure that i'm just deriving from reading something straight forward pleasure but if i see that something that comes to joysa or it becomes something blissful blissful hona happy hone se pleasure hone se zyada extreme level pe it goes ecstatic ho jata right so here a heightened form of pleasure resulting from a sense of interruption or gap in the text where something unexpected occurs maybe the hero dies right maybe the hero dies and you see that oh my god i was loving this particular fictional character mr rochester right mr darcy i was liking them but maybe if one piece of novel is written and they are shown as dead there what would be your response uh, my fictional ladies you guys will think that of course i have envisioned this man i have envisioned i fell in love with this particular fictional character but oh my god he died that gap now is something jo aapke liye movies mein bhi something at time something unexpected happens and you are, you are taken aback that is something blissful because something new is going to come then and maybe you never know if mr dasi is going to be alive again correct so this is something these were the terms which were associated with rolam bats majorly ekrivan t end mein hai then it's transitive ekrivain with i n intransitive writer here the passiveness and activeness is being you know drawn a parallel about then we have a readerly text where inactive participation is there passive ho ke reader you are reading some text and writerly text where you are you know actively participating in the reading process then we have the pleasure right where the straight forward mere pleasure of reading is derived from any work then joysa or bliss where anything unexpected that occurs and you are like oh my god i need to find an answer to this one as well that is something that he termed as joysa right i'll see you guys again in some another video where we will be taking up the previous year questions that are related to post structuralism correct so with the concepts that we have covered we will be talking about the questions in another video till then you guys keep on studying revising thank you so much and have a good day bye bye